Taiwan News. Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency Director General Aaron Aquino says former co-chair of the Interagency Committee on Anti-Drugs, Vice President Lenny Robredo, has contributed nothing significant to the country's anti-drug campaign. The Food and Drug Administration warns major online selling platforms against advertising and selling prescription medicines. The Department of the Interior and Local Government intensifies its monitoring of the use of illegal firecrackers in the country as the holiday celebration nears. The Department of Trade and Industry assures there will be no price increase in holiday goods. And the trans or the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board is set to issue special permits to over 900 bus units for the holiday season. Good evening. Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency Director General Aaron Aquino says Vice President Lenny Robredo should have met with the four clusters of the Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs when she was its co-chair. Deputy Chief seems to be dismayed with the Vice President's failure to do so. Rosalie Cos reports why. Vice President Lenny Robredo had no involvement in terms of law enforcement, so there were no significant change in contributions in the government's anti-drug campaign when she was still co-chair of the Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs or ICAD. This was revealed by Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA Director General Aaron Aquino in Malacanang this morning. She did not uh, in any way supervise our uh people down there in the uh, in the fields uh, so uh, i guess uh, uh, wala namang nabago o wala namang dapat uh, uh, glaring uh, issues uh, na makikita natin na talagang sabi natin bumababa ang krimen o bumababa ang uh, accomplishment natin sa illegal drugs or not. Chief Aquino also seemed dismayed over the Vice President's failure to meet all the ICAD clusters before meeting the officials of the United States Embassy in the Philippines and United Nations. He said the country's second top official could have understood how big the country's problem is in terms of illegal drug operations if she was able to meet the four ICAD clusters, namely the enforcement, advocacy, justice and rehabilitation and reintegration clusters. The vice president was able to meet only the enforcement cluster during her term as ICAD co-chair. Should she uh, met the four uh, ICAD clusters? magiging mas malaki yung yung kanyang uh, scope of knowledge kung ano yung drug situation ng Pilipinas and maybe after meeting the four clusters eh sana kung meron man siyang mai-implement na program o strategy to strengthen the ICAD sana nagawa sana yung gano the public should just wait for the vice president's report to be released next week the PIDEA chief also mentioned this morning the Dangerous Drugs Board's or DDB's national survey to determine the exact number of drug pushers and users in the country. It can be recalled that VP Robredo's initial directive when she was still anti-drug SAR was for the government to have baseline data on the illegal drug problem in the country. The DDB begins to conduct the survey this year to be finished in 2020. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. Consumers be warned of online sale of prescription drugs. The Food and Drug Administration of the Philippines also advises online sellers to secure permits and certificate from them before selling medicine via the internet. Aiko Miguel explains why. As the holiday season approaches, consumers want to take advantage of holiday sales, whether in malls or even in online shops. But the Food and Drug Administration of the Philippines, or FDA, once again warns online sellers and drug stores not to sell medicines online. In fact, the FDA has imposed fine on three online selling sites. It's very rampant at itong ibang ano natin, ibang na fine natin, nakita na natin yan na winarningan na natin, tas mawawala ng dalawa, tatlong araw yung mga produkto, tas after a while babalik na naman. And then we have to remind them again na bawal 
and we have we urge them now that they have to police their own ranks. FDA OIC Under Secretary Eric Domingo advises pharmacies to secure license to operate and certificate of product registration from the FDA if they want to sell medicines online. Unang una ang mga ang ating mga drug stores allowed lang kayo to sell your product within the premises of the store. Kung gusto niyo tumanggap ng online orders, you can apply for it as an extra activity with the FDA. But even then, may limitations yun. The FDA explains such limitations include prescription drugs. Maaring mag-online, mag-order online ng isang kliyente nila. Pero kapag darating siya, pag kailangan kukunin niya ng gamot, kailangan pa rin niyang kunin. Doon sa pharmacy kung saan ito ay nakastore ng tama at matse-check yung kanyang reseta. Bago ibigay sa kanya. The FDA is still verifying reports against online shops which rampantly sell medicines at cheaper prices. Once proven a violation, the online shops may face charges or fine. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Public school teachers in Cebu City have a lot to celebrate for this holiday season, part of which are cash incentives from the Cebu City government. Gladys Tawabi will tell us why. Every public school teacher in Cebu City will receive a 10,000 peso cash bonus from the Cebu City government this December. The city government has also allocated 5 million pesos for the year in parties of teachers in public schools in the city. According to Cebu City Mayor Edgar Labella, this is one way of thanking and appreciating the sacrifices of the teachers who mold the youth. Humanitarian considerations also. Considering that, you know, my mother was a teacher, my stepmother was a teacher also, I can feel for them. And I have always said this over and over again, that the most underpaid, uh, overworked, and that is understatement, among our government workers are our teachers. Around 7,000 teachers in Cebu City will receive the bonus possibly next week. This is aside from their 13th month pay. Mayor Labella adds they are also looking at adding other incentives for their teachers such as cost of living allowance or COLA. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue, Cebu City. The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, has reminded private employers to release the 13th month pay of their workers on or before December 24. Under Presidential Decree 851, private sector workers are entitled to receive a 13th month pay not later than December 24. However, an employer may release to his or her employees half of the benefit before the opening of the regular school year and the other half on or before December 24 each year. Bellio also reminded employers that the law on 13th month pay also covers house helpers and workers of small businesses. He added that the benefit should be given in cash and not in kind. Bellio urged the workers who failed to receive their 13th month pay to file a complaint with Dole regional offices. The Department of Trade and Industry assures consumers that no price increase in holiday items will happen until after the holiday season. The DTI says business owners who will take advantage this holiday season may be charged with overpricing. Joe Anano tells us why. Officials from the Department of Trade and Industry or DTI once again made rounds in Quezon City to check the prices of holiday goods in some supermarkets. Such items include ham, pasta, tomato sauce, fruit cocktail, mayonnaise, and other items. The DTI found out the prices of holiday goods in these supermarkets they visited are lower than the suggested retail price or SRP. Na monitor natin, merong mga products that are lower by 10 pesos, merong 4 pesos, 6 pesos, at uh, pi hanggang piso. So, malaking benefit para sa consumers. In October, the DTI approved the requested increase of the prices of holiday goods such as ham, fruit cocktail, pasta, mayonnaise, cheese, and condensed milk. The DTI granted a 2 to 13 percent price increase depending on the type, brand, and size of the product. That is equivalent to 3 to 76 pesos per item. The DTI assures consumers the prices of these items will no longer increase while the holiday season approaches. We give the assurance to consumers natin kung ano yung nasa suggested retail price bulletin. 
na released on October 30, 2019. Ito na yung magiging presyo until after the holidays. The agency admitted, however, they were unable to monitor several stores, so there are businessmen who are taking advantage of the pricing. We encourage the consumers na doon sila bumili sa supermarkets na, na sigurado silang binabantayan ng DTI. The DTI has earlier explained the approval of the price increase of some holiday items is reasonable as the production cost have also increased. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Environmental group Eco Waste Coalition urged the youth not to light any firecrackers and fireworks for a safe and non-toxic new year. The Eco Group launched Iwas Papu Toxic to encourage families and communities to turn away from the dangerous and polluting tradition of detonating firecrackers and fireworks to welcome the new year. The Eco Waste Coalition further urged the public not to burn used tires on New Year's Eve, which can generate loads of pollutants such as particulates, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, and other toxic chemicals that are harmful to a person's health and to the environment. The government will intensify the monitoring of the use and sale of illegal firecrackers. The Interior Department says it is up to the local governments to implement a total firecracker ban. Ray Palayo tells us why. For the Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG, the implementation of Executive Order No. 28, which limits the use of firecrackers and sets community fireworks display, is effective. DILG Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya said they will just focus on executing the EO since there is no law that totally bans the use of all types of firecrackers. He added it is the Congress which has the power to legislate such law. Firecrackers and pyrotechnics kasi, per se, are legal. Pero may mga ipinagbabawal tayo under EO28. So yung, yung Piccolo, yung, uh, yung mga Judas Belt, uh, yung uh, Goodbye Philippines. The official said the number of accidents and fire incidents related to firecrackers have decreased since the order was implemented. The police and the Bureau of Fire Protection, under Secretary Malaya said, are rounding up to make sure there are no illegal firecrackers in the market. Ang maganda ngayon, kahit gustuhin mo man magpaputok, wala ka na rin mabili. Hindi gaya nung araw, dahil madasin ang paputok noon eh. Nabibili mo sa tabi-tabi. The DILG will just let the local government units decide if they will totally ban firecrackers as what President Rodrigo Duterte pronounced earlier. So para sa amin, um, we give the, the public Kung ano gusto nila, no? Huwag lang silang bibili ng bawal. Kasi yung bawal, ikaw kumpis ka kaagad yun ng polis. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, or LTFRB, has assured there will be enough bus units to accommodate the influx of passengers expected this holiday season. The LTFRB said a total of 968 special permits will be granted to public utility buses, which will allow them to ply major thoroughfares. These bus units will cater to passengers traveling to North Luzon, South Luzon, Bicol, Visayas, and Mindanao. The LTFRB assured that special permits will be granted to bus units that underwent vigorous inspection process, adding that it sets high priority on the vehicle's road worthiness as well as the readiness of bus drivers to ensure comfortable and safe travel. Welcome back to iNews. We pick up to where Alex Baltasar left off. I am William Theo and here are the headlines. Former Solicitor General of Florin Hilbay reveals water concessionaires Manila and Manila Water want to pass their taxes on to consumers but sue the government instead. The U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations passed a free Lila resolution which calls for the immediate release of Senator Lila de Lima. Senate to inform President Rodrigo Duterte about pork insertions in the proposed 2020 budget. The Bureau of Fire Protection records more fire incidents in 2019 than in 2018. 
And Bulacan officials push to build a sports academy for athletes. Good evening, uh, water concessionaires Mainilad and Manila Water sued the government after they were not allowed to pass on to consumers taxes they should be paying. Meanwhile, some lawmakers urge the government to take back control of water distribution. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Water concessionaires Mainila and Manila Water won the case filed in the Permanent Court of Arbitration in Singapore against the Philippine government after they were not allowed to impose a rate increase for 2014 to 2018. Based on the arbitral ruling, the government must pay a combined amount of 10.8 billion pesos to Manila and Manila Water to make up for the supposed losses of the two companies. But according to the former Solicitor General Florin Hilbay, the losses the two companies claim are the corporate income taxes they wanted to pass on to consumers. After the government prohibited the two firms to do so, they decided to sue instead. During the committee hearing in the House of Representatives, both Manila and Manila Water stated they will no longer push for the collection of the 10.8 billion pesos arbitral award from the government. The water concessionaires also expressed willingness to cooperate in revising the so-called onerous provisions in the contract. But according to some congressmen, it is high time to return to the government the control of water utilities and distribution of water to ensure the interest of the public. Between now and 2022, uh, na matatapos na ang uh, term ng uh, original concession agreement, this can be the transition period no, para ibalik sa public sector ang control uh, ng tubig. According to the Makabayan Bloc, a remunicipalization can be implemented for the government to reclaim the control of water distribution. Ito na ang naging trend ngayon worldwide. No? Uh, in 37 countries, no? uh, including Germany, uh, Spain, Argentina, in, and even France, no? home to big multinational uh, water companies. The Solon adds, this will greatly ensure the rights and welfare of the consumers rather than granting new contracts to private companies who are only after profit. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Meanwhile, Justice Secretary Bernardo Guevara assures there is no conflict of interest in the review of the water concession agreement. He adds the contract is apparently inequitable. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. An allegation implicating Justice Undersecretary Emeline Aglipay Villar in the water concession agreement has recently surfaced. According to an article published by Politico.com, there is conflict of interest in the re-examination of the agreement as Yusek Aglipay Villar acts as one of the reviewers. The Undersecretary is connected with the Villar family who owns Prime Water Infrastructure Corporation. The same company was mentioned by President Rodrigo Duterte which will possibly replace Mainilad and Manila water. Yusek Aglipay Villar denies the allegation. I don't know where that came from, but um, the department conducted a, a, uh, a, a disinterested review of the possession agreements and uh, I, I don't want to even dignify the accusation <laughs> by answering further questions. Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara, on the other hand, clarifies he's leading the review of the contracts. He assures no such conflict of interest in the review. According to Secretary Guevara, it is purely coincidental that Yusek Aglipay Villar works under the Office of the State Council, tasked to review the agreement together with the Office of the Government Corporate Council. The Justice Secretary explains the contract is apparently inequitable to the government. Any lawyer will see yung mga provisions na yan that uh, we believe are monerous. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, City of Manila. Senator Panfilo Lacson reveals the projects under the last-minute pork insertions in the proposed 2020 budget to be questionable. According to the senator, the Upper House of Congress will inform President Rodrigo Duterte about the said questionable pork insertions. Nel Maribojo details why. 
Senator Panfilo Lacson today gave some details on what he discovered in the alleged last-minute pork insertions in the proposed 4.1 trillion peso 2020 budget before the approval of the bicameral conference committee. For the senator, the projects to be funded by the pork barrel are questionable. These include the repairs and rehabilitation of various roads in various parts of the country. It can be observed, he said, there are no details or specific locations where the projects will be implemented. Kung sasabihin nilang hindi pa rin pork ito, post-enactment to eh. Kasi pag na-approve ng Pangulo at may, luma- at may nakalusot ditong construction of road, Candaba, Pampanga, 22 million, saka pa lang i-identify ng congressman doon. Second is the 60 million peso uniform cost of eight flood control projects in different provinces. Yung striking, ano, eight projects, Ang amount nila, uniform, uniform yung budget, 60 million. So ang question, pare-pareho ba ang configuration ng mga ilog? The senator explains that flood control projects are one of the roots of corruption. Based on Senator Lacson's initial assessment, the pork insertions in the budget may rise up to more than 83 billion pesos depending on the result of their ongoing scrutiny. Because of this new controversy surrounding the proposed budget, Senate will inform President Rodrigo Duterte regarding the pork insertions. Nag-usap na kami ni Senate President at saka ni Senator Angara. Ililis na namin lahat yun at ipagdibigay alam namin sa Presidente through the DBM at tahala na yung Pangulo na mag o mag-analyze pa kung tama yung aming uh, sinasabi o hindi. Both houses of Congress have already ratified the proposed budget which awaits President Duterte's signature. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. And in other news, the United States Senate Committee on Foreign Relations on December 11 passed the Free Lila Resolution. U.S. Senate Resolution 142 calls for the immediate release of Senator Laila de Lima from detention and condemns the Philippine government's alleged role in extrajudicial killings as part of the anti-drug campaign. The resolution also calls on the Philippine government to drop the charges against journalist Maria Reza and online news platform Rappler. This approval at the committee level has placed the resolution closer to plenary approval. Meanwhile, a former special assistant to the president and now Senator Bongo slams the U.S. Senate in connection with the allegation that the Duterte administration is politically harassing Senator De Lima. Senator Go stresses the government, especially President Rodrigo Duterte, did not interfere in Senator De Lima's case. Go adds the president's in interest is to address the primary problems the country is facing. Alamin niyo muna kung political harassment ba ito, kung talagang merong kaso o may kasalanan yung uh, tao. Huwag muna kayong manghimasok sa bagay na hindi niyo naman po inalam muna. More fire incidents occurred this year in the country from January 1st to December 11, according to the Bureau of Fire Protection. The BFP also reports more damages caused by fire this year than last year. Dante Amento has more details. The Bureau of Fire Protection or BFP reports a slight increase in the number of fire incidents. According to BFP's data, over 16,000 fire incidents occurred in the country from January 1 to December 11, 2019. This number is 534 more than last year's record of just 15,848. Meanwhile, the entire damages to properties due to fire reached 6.4 billion pesos. That's a 2 billion peso increase from the damages caused by fire in 2018 with 4.06 billion pesos. That toll among civilians reached 326 this year while it was 299 last year. This year, four BFP personnel died during operations. BFP spokesperson Fire Senior Superintendent Gerandi Agonos explains most of the fire incidents are grass fire. Uh, usually po ang makikita natin na datos na marami yung bilang ay bunga po ito ng grass fire. Sa napakainit na panahon po ay nakikita natin araw-araw tuwing summer. The BFP also stresses the primary causes of fire are electrical connections, lighted cigarette butt, and open flame. 
Meanwhile, the BFP continues to intensify its campaign against the use of firecrackers as the holiday season nears with the aim to prevent the occurrence of fire. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The pilot tests for registration in the Philippine Identification System or PhilSys continues until early half of next year. However, the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA says the targeted 14 million registrants for 2020 may not be reached. Harleen Delgado reports why. We saw Charmaine applying for a government ID today. She just got hired from her first job. The process was fine for Charmaine, although she admits it would be best to lessen the number of requirements such as valid IDs. Charmaine says she is in favor of the implementation of the national ID system. Parang ang convenient niya po gamitin siya, di ba? Like dito po to valid IDs. Pagkukuha pa lang sa wallet, ang dami mo nang hahalukatin para da, sa mga IDs eh. Unlike doon, isa na lang po yung hahanapin mo para i-present yun. The Philippine Identification System, or PhilSys, is a centralized identification platform that aims to provide a valid proof of identity for all citizens and resident aliens in the country. Some of the transactions where the national ID can be used include social welfare and benefits of the government, application for passports and driver's license, tax-related transactions, admission in schools or government hospitals, opening of bank accounts, registration and voting purposes, and as criminal and clearance record. The Armed Forces of the Philippines earlier welcomed the act as an important aspect for national security that will help in unmasking insurgents and criminals. The Philippine National Police also expressed intent to connect their national crime information system to the national database. Some groups, on the other hand, expressed concern about the national ID, saying it might compromise the security and privacy of personal information. The PSA clarifies safeguards are in place to ensure all data are secured and encrypted. From the gathering of the data information to the transmission of this data to our data center, ay tinitignan po natin kung saan mo pwedeng pasukan ng mga hackers itong system natin. PSA Deputy National Statistician Attorney Lord De La Cruz explains some personal information in the national ID are optional. The required information include full name, sex, date and place of birth, blood type, address, and nationality. Other information such as marital status, mobile number, and email address are all optional. However, biometrics information is required. Other government ID such as the Government Service Insurance System or GSIS and the Social Security System or SSS will remain to be in use. The mass registration for national ID will begin in July 2020. However, the 14 million target registrants for next year might fall short as the funds may also come short. The PSA revealed they need 5.6 billion pesos to cover the target population for registration next year. However, only 2.4 billion pesos was allocated for FILCs under the unprogrammed appropriation in the 2020 proposed budget of the National Economic and Development Authority. Kasi pinakilala din sa mga senators na magiging effect pag ito lang po yung budget versus pag ibinigay yung buong budget na hinihingin ng FILCs. So, pag medyo mas maliit, medyo may mas delay po tayo sa registration natin, which we do not want to happen. The PSA says it is still confirming if only 3 billion pesos has been appropriated for full seats in the approved 2020 national budget. Despite this, the PSA maintains the project is on track with the plan to register 110 million Filipinos by mid-2022. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue, Kazan City. Vietnam officially accepted the Southeast Asian Games Federation flag as the Philippines formally handed over the hosting of the 31st Southeast Asian Games or SEA Games for the year 2021. 
In November, Prime Minister Nguyen Hoa Quoc announced that the tournaments will be hosted in the capital city, Hanoi, and adjacent localities. The 31st SEA Games will feature 36 events and expected to draw participations from 11 countries across the region. Vietnam last hosted the biennial meet in 2003 when it was hailed the overall champion. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police, or PNP, said security for the SEA Games will remain until the last foreign delegate has left the country. PNP officer in charge, Lieutenant General Archie Gamboa, said he has ordered the PNP security contingent to continue police visibility and provide assistance to SEA Games delegates. Meanwhile, the Bulacan Sports Council pushes to create a sports academy for athletes in the province. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. Athletes and sports enthusiasts in Bulacan may soon witness the rise of a sports academy in the province. According to the Bulacan Sports Council, they are coordinating with the Bulacan provincial government for this project. Magkakaroon ng sports facilities yan, lahat ng events, uh, team or individual, Pero ando na rin yung school. So parang yung mga bawat atlet magkakasama sa isang school, magkakasama. Let's say kung level elementary, lahat ng player, basketball, baseball, team, or individual, may sariling room yan. At the same time, school, uh, sports facilities, at the same time, dormitorio. Kaya medyo kailangan talaga ng budget. The Bulacan Sports Council has recently conducted a sports summit for trainers, coaches, and physical education teachers. The summit aimed to increase the knowledge of trainers and honing potential athletes in the province. And what I wanted to tell all the participants is eh, dapat mag-allocate mag rin ng panahon para sa pagturo, para ma-develop yung mental aspect ng batang naglalaro ng isang sport. Mas mainam yung true games, mas masama ang mas may encourage. Uh, I-apply namin yung natutunan namin sa, sa seminar na ito. The 38th Southeast Asian Games saw 20 Bulakenyo athletes in softball, baseball, volleyball, fencing, and swimming competition. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. And for the news abroad, here's Kaf Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening, Kaf. Good evening, William. Voters in the United Kingdom are heading to the polls in a second snap election in just over two years, with the all-consuming topic of Brexit still at the forefront of the political conversation. Jovic Burmas reports. The UK will go to the polls on Thursday for the country's third general election in less than five years. The contest, the first to be held in December in nearly 100 years, follows those in 2015 and 2017. Polling stations in 650 constituencies across England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland open at 7 GMT. After the polls close at 2200 GMT, counting will begin straight away. Most results are due to be announced in the early hours of Friday morning. A total of 650 MPs will be chosen under the first-past-the-post system used for general elections, in which the candidate who secures the most votes in each individual constituency is elected. Whether or not Brexit goes ahead on 31st of January, the latest date signed off between the European Union and the UK after a series of delays largely depends on whether the current Prime Minister Conservative Party leader Boris Johnson secures a majority in Parliament. The Tory PM who campaigned to leave the EU in 2016 was saddled with a minority government when he took over from his predecessor Theresa May in the summer. She lost the majority in a snap election she called in 2017 in what was a miscalculated bid to secure a Brexit mandate. With his slogan, Get Brexit Done, Johnson has presented himself as the only surefire way of delivering the results of the 2016 referendum in which 52% of voters chose to leave the EU. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. Chilean officials say they have located debris believed to be from an Air Force plane that went missing on Monday. Details in this report. 
The Chilean Air Force said that parts of a plane that crashed en route to Antarctica with 38 people aboard were found in the water near the last known position of the C-130 Hercules transport aircraft. Bits of foam from the plane's interior were encountered by the crew of Chilean flagged fishing vessel Antarctic Endeavour in an area 30 kilometers south of the location of the C-130 before contact was lost, the Air Force said in a statement. Other pieces of wreckage were spotted by a Brazilian naval vessel assisting in the search for the C-130, the Almirante Maximiliano, in waters roughly 500 kilometers north Ushuaia, Argentina. The Maximiliano remains in the area collecting debris in coordination with Chilean authorities, Brazil's defense ministry said. The aircraft took off at 4.55 p.m. Monday from Chabunco Air Base in Punta Arenas and what was supposed to be a three-hour-long flight to Chile's Presidente Eduardo Frei Montalva base in Antarctica. The Hercules was carrying 38 people, 17 crew and 21 passengers, including three civilians. Families of the people aboard the ill-fated flight traveled Wednesday to Punta Arenas. The crash was Chile's worst aviation accident since 2011 when a plane carrying relief supplies to the Juan Fernandez Islands went down with 21 people. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Greta Thunberg, the Swedish schoolgirl who inspired a global movement to fight climate change, has been named Time Magazine's Person of the Year for 2019. The 16 years old is the youngest person to be chosen by the magazine in a tradition that started in 1927. Last year, the teenager started an environmental strike by missing lessons most Fridays to protest outside the Swedish parliament building. It sparked a worldwide movement that became popular with the hashtag Fridays for Future. Since then, she has become a strong voice for action on climate change, inspiring millions of students to join protests around the world. Earlier this year, she was nominated as a candidate for the Nobel Peace Prize. Three hospital patients have died after a group of lawyers attacked the medical complex in Pakistan. Meanwhile, the death toll from a New Zealand volcano eruption rose to 16. Nina Armilio details why. In New Zealand, two people who were injured in the recent eruption of the Wakari volcano in northeastern New Zealand died overnight at hospital, taking the death toll to 16. So far, the police have confirmed the deaths of eight people while another eight remain missing, but authorities have said the latter have virtually no chance of survival. The total number of deaths could still increase given that there are 20 people injured, most of them in a serious condition. The recent two deaths were that of two brothers aged 13 and 16 from Australia. Meanwhile, New Zealand police have said they plan to recover bodies from White Island on Friday morning. The rescue mission will go ahead despite the risk of another eruption, police said. GeoNet, New Zealand's geological hazard information site, said on Thursday there was a 50 to 60 percent chance of another eruption within the next 24 hours. The site's estimates have, over the past days, shown a steady increase in the risk of a new eruption. But families of the victims were growing increasingly desperate for the bodies to be recovered, police said. In Pakistan, at least four patients died after lawyers stormed a cardiology hospital in Lahore and scuffled with doctors, forcing them to leave patients in critical condition unattended. Some media reports said at least 10 deaths among patients after lawyers picked up a row with doctors. Protesters smashed windows and doors of emergency wards, leading to mayhem at the hospital where some patients in serious conditions were left unattended. Police later detained several lawyers on charges of damaging hospital property, beating up doctors, and clashing with hospital guards and police. Authorities say tension had been brewing between the city's lawyers and doctors since last month when one of the Lahore lawyers complained that doctors mistreated him when he brought an alien relative to the hospital. It was unclear what the mistreatment involved. And in Spain, in the year that Iceland lost its first glacier due to climate change, experts from around the world have gathered at COP25 in Madrid to stress the urgency of the effects of this global crisis on mountainous regions. 
mountains are seriously affected by climate change, so the study of their alterations has become crucial. The Himalayan region is the source of water for 2 billion people, so the climate crisis has and will continue to have an important impact. ICMOD is working to bring together the countries that share the Himalayas so that they can fight for a sustainable environment and help residents' livelihoods. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you. Kath Damaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. The work of art of five Filipino artists are on display at the Philippine Consulate General in Toronto, Canada. Filipinos in Toronto are encouraged to showcase their talents and abilities in the field of the arts. Here is Rosalie Cos's report. Five Filipino artists called Grupo Cinco showcase their works of art in a painting exhibit at the Philippine Consulate General in Toronto, Canada. One of the artists in the exhibit themed the heart of the season is Michelle Sherman Ramos. Michelle, who has been painting since her childhood, includes her masterpiece entitled No Time for Mourning, the birth of La Generala Gabriela Silang among the displays. This art piece illustrates the extraordinary bravery of the Filipina hero who is the first female leader of the Philippine Revolution. She's different in the sense that she decided to take arms and lead the men. And there must have been something really unique about her because, you know, she was able to inspire the men to follow her instead of another guy taking the lead. So I wanted to capture that moment when she decided to make that decision. And the, and the sparks here represent the catalyst, which is her husband's murder. Those who came to attend the opening night of the exhibit say they were impressed with the art they witnessed. Well, uh, first of all, it's our honor to be here tonight. Uh, con secondly, we would uh, want to say congratulations for the like, Filipino like, Consulate General. Consul General Orontes Castro calls on Filipinos in Canada who wish to share their talents and even Filipino authors to reach out to his office. At nananawagan ako sa ating mga kababayan, dito sa aming within our jurisdiction, na kayo ay mag-report uh, dito sa amin kung kayo ay talented na uh, uh, magpipi, uh, no, no, mga artist. Ganon din yung mga authors, no? uh, authors sa mga libro uh, tungkol sa ating bansa. Grupo Cinco's painting exhibit is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. until March 6 next year at the Philippine Consulate General Office in Toronto. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this December 12, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar, I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. She did not uh, in any way supervise our uh, people down there in the, uh, in the fields. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, uh, wala namang nabago o wala namang dapat uh, uh, glaring uh, issues uh, na makikita natin na talagang sabihin natin bumababa ang krimen o bumababa ang uh, accomplishment natin sa illegal drugs. And, uh... Alamin nyo muna sa mga senators ng ibang bansa, alamin nyo muna kung political harassment ba ito, kung talagang merong kaso o may kasalanan yung uh, tao. Huwag muna kayong manghimasok sa bagay na hindi nyo naman po inalam muna. Sabihin nilang hindi pa rin torque ito, post-enactment to eh. Kasi pag na-approve ng Pangulo at may, may nakalusot ditong construction of road, Gandaba, Pampanga, 22 million, sa ka pa lang i-identify ng congressman doon. It's very rampant at itong ibang ano natin, ibang na-fine natin, nakita na natin yan, na-winarningan na natin, tas mawawala ng dalawa, tatlong araw yung mga produkto, tas after a while, babalik na naman. And then we have to remind them again na bawal and we have we urge them no, that they have to police their own ranks. Magkakaroon ng sports facilities yan, lahat ng events, uh, team or individual, pero ando na rin yung school. 
So parang yung mga bawat atlet magkakasama sa isang sport.